what is going on guys this is the new thing that is about to drop down we're about to get into intellectual property school now this is going to be very different very different than anything else i've ever done so what's going to happen <clears throat> for the month of november you can get in for a thousand bucks you can get in for um payments payments of 100 bucks sometimes 12 and this is going to be the curriculum First of all, we're going to get into scripted days, mental discipline, the power of intellectual property, writing your first book for fun and profit, how to start a YouTube channel that sells products, which is very different than just starting a YouTube channel. There's certain things you got to do. How to make money with content, how to create and sell online courses for fun and profit, and the YouTube ads course. So we're going to start with scripted days because, guys, you know what's going on. Everyone's trying to cancel me, but they can't cancel me. They can't. They can't do it. And you want to know why? You want to know why they can't cancel me? Because of this. And because of this. And because of this. And because of this, they can't cancel me because of intellectual property. They cannot cancel me. I want you to think about that. These folks are angry and legal. They cannot cancel me because I have this. This is my secret power. Because I'm going to go to the management. I am the management. There's nothing these clowns can do. They cannot go tell on me. They can't get me fired. Because I. this is the power of intellectual property. You're seeing it in living color. You're seeing the massive power. And I'm going to teach you all of my little tricks. And we're going to start with scripted days, no discipline. There's probably going to be some other courses in here because you guys have got to get the foundational stuff. And then, you know, for some of you, like writing, writing my first book is what made me a millionaire because I got into it. So we're going to get into it. And there are probably going to be some more courses, but the link will be below if you want to get into the intellectual property school, how to make organic money or what I like to call pure internet money. And if you're in the corporate toolbox, you're going to get this. So you don't have to worry about signing up for it. You're going to get this. Now, if you're in corporate papers, I will be sending out a discount link a little later because there's other than scripted days, which I think everyone has, there's not a lot there. So give me a little time to get cooking. But I'm going to teach you how to create intellectual property that makes money. Right now, everyone's trying to cancel Glenn and Cameron, but they can't because I have my own thing. I remember years and years ago, I was talking to um, Curtis Mayfield. He was a patient in the hospital. And he, that just showed me the power. This man was paralyzed from the neck down. And because he created intellectual property, he was able to support his family. That is crazy. That is crazy. So the link's below, and I will talk to you guys in the next, in this video, because we're going to have a little fun in this video. I can routinely see these comments, you're a predator. Now, in that video, which is here on YouTube somewhere, you can find it, I expressly said I wrote ads on Craigslist. I did not go out looking for women. I wrote ads, women answered the ads. How does that make me a predator when I put out an ad and the woman answers an ad? That means that the woman actually liked what she read and she responded to the ad, which ain't that easy if you're trying to do online dating. How many of you are doing online dating and finding that it ain't really that easy? It's kind of frustrating. So I would write these ads and these women and young girls would answer them. How does that make me a predator? See, this is why I'm talking about reading comprehension and listening. I said that in the video. I wrote these ads. I have never gone to a school. I've never gone to a playground to pick up young girls. Honestly, this is, this is how I went. For about 12 years, I didn't do any normal dating. I would write an ad. Women would answer the ad. And they would come to my house and fuck me. And I even said this on the lead day show that it was the American male dream to have a system where women would come have sex with you without dinner dates, without long-term commitments. And I, I stand by that. A lot of dudes, if you can get it like that, you would. So most of America is stupid because if you got from me writing ads and women answering ads that I am a predator, you're dumb as fuck because that's not what I said. And also I'm getting, he's a self-confessed child molester. This is something else. I was messing with young girls. I wasn't messing with children. See, this is part of the bitch wearing, road wearing bitch expression where he's shamed. I haven't watched it. I have no intention of watching it, but I know he made some theatrics so some he, he got he got very emotional, probably very emotional, and people are regurgitating these talking points, which are false narratives. And this is the thing: a lot of people watch that video. Shout out to 
Alan Roger Curry, who watched the video and came up with a critical analysis. I did not break the law. I'm not a predator. And I don't mess with children. But stupid America actually keeps put, trying to affix these labels to me because it makes them feel comfortable. And uh, as someone said in the comment section, it ain't about you getting young pussy. He said, these are the best jealous. And I really, really believe that because here's something else. Right now, there's someone that's done somebody in your family wrong. Literally caused someone in your family pain. What are you doing about it? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's, here's something else. Right now, there are people walking around who have committed murder. They're dating, they're going to work, they're raising their families. And the police, you know, because, you know, I, I keep getting this question. Have you ever gone to jail? Let me say this clearly. Never went to jail, not going to jail, because I don't commit crimes. What I did was not a crime. As much as you want it to be, and this, this is where the emotion comes in. This is where people press their emotions in place of facts and the logic. The police are not looking for me. The police are not going to knock on my door. Once again, because America is dumb. This is how the legal system works. Give you, give you a, a, a for instance. Right now, I had someone that stole my car. He got caught in my car, got arrested. You would think that the legal system would handle the rest. Nope. I have to go ahead and press charges against Brittany to get her arrested. See, there, there's legwork. So I have to go ahead and provide evidence. I've filed a police report, so that's my evidence. Then I have to swear out a warrant for her arrest. So once again, for all of you sad clowns who feel that I should be arrested, that I should be in jail because I got some young pussy, you are telling on yourself of how pathetic, how sad, how messed up your life is. Especially all of these moist male YouTubers making videos about me because they would do it if they could do it, but they can't do it. They don't have a talent. They don't have a talent. I created my own inbound pussy system. And it worked really well. And you know, you know something that's interesting? I can use those same ads that I wrote 10, 15, 20 years ago today, and they still work. They still work. So... If you're coming to my YouTube channels and putting predator, that says how fucking stupid you are. And also, the lack of accountability to the women. It's very strange that a woman, once again, for you, you're doing online dating, you've got your ad up there. How many women are responding to that? Not that many, but because I am a good writer, I'm a very good writer. I'm a, I, I write great ad copy that I was able to create ads that got me pussy. Oh, hell no. No. And all of you women who keep going like, I'm ugly. I'm going to say it again. You are a low class bitch to go out and insult someone who's done nothing to you. That tells me a lot about your life because Today, I had a very interesting interaction. I'm going to call this woman Claire Huxtable because she is a black woman. You can tell that grew up with money. She's got that look. Very nice exchange. Classy woman. Claire Huxtable wouldn't, even if she knew, she would not come on this YouTube channel and leave a disparaging comment because she's got class. A lot of you low class bitches and see, this is the thing. This is why you can't get a decent man. Because I'm starting to see it. It's like you're striking out against me because 
I am rich, I am handsome, and I'm getting younger pussy than you. I forget the dude's name, but he said replace something with competition. I forget the word. But a lot of y'all are mad because I am 55 years old and I can get me a younger woman and you may be whatever age you are and you may think you look good, but you can't get a decent man. Woo! Did that hit? Did that hit? Did that hurt? The fact that you think you cute, but you can't get a decent man. You ain't had a decent man in forever, ever. And you was like, well, he, he's ugly and all. There's a lot of women who think I am damn handsome. I remember Craigslist protocols. This girl, she was gorgeous. Green eyes, blonde hair, triple D's, night tights. And she used to look at me and call me gorgeous. So I've been referred to as handsome, gorgeous, and good looking enough to understand that for a lot of women, I am good looking. Now you're just coming on the YouTube channel to be a low class bitch and to hurdle insults because your own life is so fucked up. Your life, cause see happy people don't do what y'all are doing. Happy people don't come out and mess with someone who's done nothing to them. Nothing. That's a sign of dysfunction. That's a sign of a lack of class. That's a sign that you weren't raised properly. That's a sign you were raised by wolves. Let's talk about karma. Years and years ago, me and a friend, we were having a conversation about karma and he's like, you know, that's bad karma. And for the record, I don't believe in karma. I don't believe there is a mystic, majestical, magical force that weighs out and evens the scales that if someone does something bad over here, then this karma sweeps in and slaps them upside the head. I don't believe in karma because if karma was real, white people would be walking down the street spontaneously combusting, pop, pop, pop. White people ain't spontaneously combusting. So there is no karma. Karma doesn't exist, but it is the purview of the poor, downtrodden and ineffective. You want to know why you guys believe in karma so bad? Cause you don't have no damn power. See, I believe in this. The only rights and rules that you have are the rights and rules that you can enforce. That's it. I had a case where a woman fell pregnant and left the state with our child and she went ahead and ran for, you know, for child support. And you know what I did? I fought it and I won and I got her case dismissed. So I feel that I have a certain level of power, which is why I don't believe in karma karma if you believe in karma more than likely you're uneducated more than likely you're poor more than likely you have no power and you're wanting this mystical force in the universe to come out and to even the scales because your bitch ass cannot protect yourself you cannot defend yourself Look at the Goldmans and how they were on O.J. Simpson. Even though O.J. Simpson beat the criminal case, he lost the civil case because they wouldn't let it go. So the Goldmans went after O.J. with all they had and they were enforcing their rights. See, a lot of you have no clue how to enforce your rights. A lot of you don't even know how to write a letter. A lot of you are weak. Many of you are impotent and also many of you are functionally stupid. And when I say that, this is what I mean. You, you think you're intelligent because you go with your feelings and your gut. It's my gut. I know he, because once again, in that video, I only confessed to fucking a 17 year old. That much is true. She was 17. Beautiful girl, beautiful girl, dark, dark hair, blue eyes, big titties. She was a hairdresser. She lived on her own. She had her own car. 
And as someone put in the comments, this 17 year old was doing better than a lot of adults are today. And um, at the time I found out how old she was, I had fucked her like 12 times. You can't unfuck a chick. It's like, okay, we're gonna stop this because the damage was done. And I went straight to the internet and I was like, what is the age of consent in Georgia? Oh, 17. Uh, age of consent in Georgia is 16. And she was 17. Okay. And she was an emancipated minor. She, her parents had really nothing to do with her. She was doing her own thing. So I was good to go. I was good to go. And there are people who feel because I fucked a 17 year old, I should be under the jail. I should be behind the jail. You want to know why you feel that way? Because your weak ass in life can't do the shit you want to do. You can't. You work a job that you hate. You have to work around motherfuckers you don't like. And you see me living the life and you hate me because my life is better than yours. Going back to that karma thing. Karma. Actually, since I released that video, my life has gotten better, not worse. I've been meeting women. I've been enjoying stuff. I feel, re I feel invigorated. Um, my life has gotten better and I'm making more money. So, but then again, I didn't really do anything bad. I didn't do anything bad because you sexually repressed fucks think that an older man, and there's this chick here on YouTube who keeps pushing this fake ass agenda that young girls don't like older men. Let me tell you something. On the Craigslist protocols, you, I put my age. I put, I think I was, you know, whatever age I was at the time I was placing those ads. And girls in high school, we used to answer those ads knowing that I was older. Every damn day, I would get a message from a girl in high school. Every damn day. But young girls don't like older men. How many of you, and please put this in the comments, knew a girl in your high school that was dating someone that was 10, 15 years older? It is common. Common. It ain't, it's not atypical. It is common for younger women to date older men. It is so common. And my grandmother, who was about 20 years younger than my grandfather, once again, you know, the, this whole agenda of it's only three years. It's a false narrative. But if you believe in karma, more than likely you're uneducated, more than likely you're poor, and more than likely you have some demons. More than likely you were done wrong in life and you did not have the power to fight back. You didn't have the power to fight back. So you feel that someone's going to save you. This mystical force in the universe is going to come right and tip the scales and make them even. All for your benefit. I ain't going to worry about it. I'm going to let God handle it. Like I, I said this before. I don't believe in karma, but I believe in revenge. And this is some revenge that's going to happen because I was in the 740 today and the little iDrive doesn't work. So broken windshield, the iDrive is messed up. And this is something else that you poor, stupid fucks can't do. You cannot maintain nice shit. That's why you don't have shit. I have seen it over and over and over. From an intellectual standpoint, I knew that poor people were not used to nice things. But from this standpoint, I am consistently seeing that y'all be fucking some stuff up because you don't know. You don't appreciate it. How is it I can have a car for 14 years and never wreck it? How is it I can have a car for 14 years and never have a flat tire? How is it can I have a car for 14 years, keep it maintained, keep it running? Oh, that's right, I got money. See, this is one of the issues that I'm seeing with you poor motherfuckers. Instead of fixing a car, y'all will do some jerry-rigging. I bought some cars where the car, the person ran into it and the bumper 
had an issue. Instead of appropriately fixing it, they put some JB Weld or some other stuff on it and it fell apart. So when you're poor, and I'm going to tell you a story. My Uncle James, rest in peace, Uncle James. My Uncle James was trying to level me up. He was schooling me. He came down to visit one summer and we were doing some stuff and he was fixing the light and he said, hand me a screwdriver, right? So I go in the kitchen and get a butter knife because that's what we were using for a screwdriver. And then I hand him the butter knife and he looks at me crazy and he's like, that's a butter knife. I said, hand me the screwdriver. And he said, it's that tool right there. So I hand him the screwdriver and after we fixed the light and stuff, he sits me down and says, look, son, you got to have the right tools for the job. If you don't have the right tools, you cannot do the job accurately or competently. So have the right tools for the job. And I'll never forget that lesson because I was doing what you poor people do, trying to make do with something that wasn't designed to do what you wanted to do. A butter knife can turn a screw, but it wasn't designed for that. A screwdriver was designed for that. And historically, this is what you, the poor people do. You will cons consistently not fix shit. And like, I'm going to do a video for, I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to talk about that. That's going to be on Savage Money. But instead of fixing stuff correctly, you don't do things the right way. You don't level up stuff the correct way. And this is one thing that is going to consistently backfire in your, not backfire on you, not having the right tools, not doing things, you know, because once again, uh, I put up here like for the Porsche Cyan, two rear tires was like 1200 bucks for the rear tires. And many people say, you can go to discount tire and everything. See, I don't look for the cheapest option. I look for the correct option. I understand where I'm at in life. I have the money to do things the right way. And that's very important to do things the right way. So I've got 21 inch rims on that Porsche and I put the right tire on that Porsche. I did not have to go out and find or figure out or finagle or put something on there that didn't belong. But that's what you poor motherfuckers do versus leveling up. And I'm about to tell you something. I'm about to dig into you stupid motherfuckers. You don't have to be poor. You don't have to be. You choose to be poor. Oh, I'm not, you know, like, whoa, 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 I don't choose. No, you choose to be poor. And I'm going to tell you why you choose to be poor. Your money is where you invest your time. And you invest your time in bullshit consistently, seven days a week. You don't want to work. You don't want to do anything. You would want to play a video game versus reading a book. Like, I know TikTok's a big thing. I don't mess around with TikTok because TikTok makes you dumb. I don't mess around with TikTok. I don't watch TikToks. You know, people send me TikToks and stuff. I do not go down these TikTok holes because, see, if you understood what TikTok was doing, you would not be watching TikTok. TikTok rewires your brain. And it makes it hard for you to concentrate. And when you cannot concentrate, it is hard for you to have long-term sustained effort on a, a activity that will yield positive results. You can't do it. So you choose comfort. You choose fun versus you choose leveling up. And you know how I know that you choose to be poor? Why do we have the HB1 visa? We have to import the mathematicians and scientists because you lazy, dumb motherfuckers don't want to go to college and take these hard classes. We have to import that shit because our homegrown talent don't want to do it because it's hard. It makes my brain hurts. You lazy, sad fucks. And you want to come here on my channel and insult me, yet you are living in a crappy apartment, a crappy house, 
driving a shitty ass car and you feel morally superior because you wait a minute you can't let's just go ahead and keep it real you can't get no young pussy so it's not like it was a choice you can't you don't have enough swag you you can't so it ain't even a choice but you feel morally superior than someone who has written books amazon.com glendon cameron proof written training courses disruptive mail hustlers university b school for hustlers and now the masculine frame proof so you feel morally superior because in your fucked up mind, you know you ain't shit. You ain't shit but a fucking buster. And that's why you in your other little group of equally busted, broke, never accomplished anything, uneducated fucks are coming to my channel to talk all this stuff because you can't build shit. And that's why you believe in karma because you don't have enough power to enforce your rights. Someone is someone raped your sister. Did you go gun him down? Nope. But you want to come put your hands on the dude on YouTube because he got some young pussy. You sad little fuck. Sad. Right now, you've got issues going on in your family, but you're more concerned with what I'm doing because you're impotent. You can't do shit. You can't build the life that you want. So you want to come here and try, let, let's say, put my video up the other day. The canceled Glendon Cameron program is a miserable failure. Y'all ain't canceling shit. Y'all don't have no power. You can't do shit to me and it pisses you off. And now you want to attack my supporters because it's like, well, attacking him ain't getting us nowhere. And my supporters, they ain't going nowhere. People rocking with me, they're going to continue to rock with me. And this is what's funny. Some of you sad fucks are going to come to the dark side. <laughs> Some of you are going to come to the dark side because I'm going to keep putting up content. I'm going to keep talking about your stupid asses. And then somebody put up there that, you know, uh, you got a big ego and you're playing a dangerous game. That little bitch ass pussy's a scared little punk. Donald Trump literally had half of the country angry at his ass. Did anyone take a shot at Donald Trump? Nope. Half the country was angry at this motherfucker. Half the country ain't angry at me. It is a small group of internet fucks, never do wells, unaccomplished people who've never done shit in life who are just simply jealous. And I was having a conversation with someone who was trying to defend you and Point by point, I de deconstructed his argument. It was like, it's okay to speak out about morals. I said, so it's okay to just insult someone that ain't done shit to you. You said, no, nah, they ain't cool. And then he was like, well, you asked the question, like, if people have healthy sex lives, why would they be outraged? And he said, you know, parents. I said, most of these fucks who are being in these videos are not parents or teenagers. And he hasn't answered. Because see, when you sit down and you logically deconstruct this, what you're doing constitutes hate, jealousy, and stupidity because you bitches believe in karma. I'm going to show you some karma. I'm going to keep living well. I'm going to keep making money. I'm going to keep being happy while you go out and do whatever little bullshit you do, like weekends. It's the weekend, man, because that's when you can be free. Because you, you, you can't control your life. You cannot build a life of design and intent. You can't. Because you're uneducated. And you're stupid. And you don't understand the products of success. You, you, you're clueless. You, you have no clue. And all you do is hang around equal losers. Your whole clique is made of losers. That's what y'all are. Because the social economic level that you're born on in is typically the social economic level that you will die in. So it's very interesting. But this is why poor people believe in karma. Because they have no power. They have no agency. Like, let's talk about uh, the king of Saudi, I forget his name. He goes by these initials. 
but he's the guy that sent this hit squad to Turkey to cut up this, this reporter. All right. Dude forces his agenda. He's like, I will fly people out the country into another country to kill somebody. That is someone you don't want to fuck with. I will never insult this man. I will never say anything because he don't care. He got enough money. He got enough power to push his agenda. Even if you're in another country, he will do it. I am not fucking with him, but see y'all would y'all would go out and be saying some stuff because you're stupid. You don't really know real power when you see it. You, you have no clue to what real power is. You would just be, but once again, you know, shout out to the supporters of Glendon Cameron. Shout out to the family because we're going to rock. We're going to do some stuff because as I taught y'all, as I said in the beginning, we're going to get into intellectual property because this is where the dumb fucks run into a wall. They're like, we're going to cancel Glendon Cameron. <laughs> Bam. Who can we tell on? We can't tell nobody on him. We can't deconstruct his business. There ain't shit we can do because you're impotent. You're impotent. You're trying to fuck and your dick won't get hard because you're impotent. You're impotent. You have no power. You have no agency. You're just a sad little person that comes on the internet to find a collective of equally sad little people. And I find it so hilarious. I really do. But this is why y'all believe in and y'all poor people. Y'all can't handle shit. I'm just seeing this firsthand. The number of folks in the BMW who cannot drive it without flattening the tires, cannot drive it without getting in a wreck, can't handle it. Just can't handle it. And look, I'm about to go somewhere else for all you, you men, you cannot handle a beautiful woman. You can't handle it. You would be so skittish and scared that she going to cheat on you that you fuck up the relationship because you are weak with no confidence, no swag, no character, nothing. And that's why most of the men in the manosphere hate on women. I said it. The manosphere is about hating on women. That's the majority of it. Not about getting with women, not understanding women, not having like how many of these people on the manosphere had the talent to write an ad to get a woman to come to his house and fuck him. Zero. Zero. None of those guys could do it. They don't even understand it, but they're, yeah, we're going to, we're going to see this chick hit the wall. Yay. She hit the wall. She hit the wall. Cause you, you're happy. She hit the wall. Cause you never could fuck her with your weak, impotent ass. You could never get with her. And that's why you happy to see her fail because you could never get with her. That's why you're a loser. I don't cheer when people fail. I don't go around leaving disparaging comments on people's channels. That I don't agree with, you know why? Cause I'm a winner. I'm a winner. And a lot of you sick, dumb fucks are losers and you're going to keep being losers. And I'm gonna tell you why you're going to keep being a loser. Cause you don't want to change who you are. You're going to keep seeking comfort, pleasure, and escapism versus doing the hard work of building a quality life. You're just not going to do it. You're just not going to do it. You're incapable of doing it. You're just going to keep here consuming loser content, content for losers and assholes. That's what you're going to keep doing. So that's all I got for you clowns, you punks, you sycophants. And once again, shout out to all the people who support Glendon Cameron. Cause we're going to do some beautiful things in 2022. We're going to do some magnificent things. I got some, I got big plans and y'all going to love it. And the corporate citizens are going to love it because we're getting ready to cook because now I feel better. I feel better. All right. So I will see you guys in the next one.